Hello there, Sarfancy here and welcome in this video where I will show you how to render screens and illustrations from Unreal Engine just as these. If you want real time renders for your portfolio or if you just want to make illustrations, perfect as well. Let's get to it. All right, let's start by creating new project uh, version 4.24, but this will probably work in any version and we want to create a game and let's use just a blank template and make sure that you have starter contents, add everything to desktop console, blah, blah, blah. It's not really important and call it, I don't know, asset. You know what? Asset sounds good. Create project. Now in the project, you can delete everything you need to do, don't need it, but Let's not even bother with that. Click on starter content and there should be maps. Open it and there is advanced lighting. So let's open it and you can see that here is probably everything you will ever need for rendering any of your assets or your models. Uh, there is some preview cube which you can use, but honestly, let's just delete it for now and put here some other asset. Okay. Okay, I have imported the lights for from the game I'm working on, which you can see somewhere here. That's not why you are here. So let's quickly add textures and I will skip that part. I'm using texture preset from a substance painter, which you can find somewhere here. All right, done. My asset is prepared like for a regular game and let's put it in here. And because just standing like that, it looks a little bit weird. Let's pose it. But that's something you don't really usually need to take care of. And let's say that you have your asset prepared, textured and everything uh, is done as it should. And now what to do? You need to get some nice picture of that. So for that we will click on cinematics and add master sequence. Click OK. You really don't need to bother with that. And start with deleting that. Otherwise it's a little bit buggy. Indeed. This all shot, all these shots. There is actually one more thing we will do before that, and that's to do something with lighting. If you want, you can use this HDRI because that generates all the lighting for that. But you can also change it. Let's go to your starter content, and there is HDRI folder, and you can go to sites like HDRI Heaven and etc. 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 and find yourself a better HDRI that's more suitable for that. So let's start right the different one. Okay, I have imported two other HDRIs, one in 4K, other in 8K. And let's try this 8K Studio and how to change it is actually really simple. Let's click on BP light stage and right here you can see you have HRI cube map and you can simply change it. So let's put here first the Shanghai to see how it looks. Okay, fine. You can see that whole lighting has changed. Your shadow is somewhere else, but I would like to use Studio Small and you can see it's again completely changed. But there is few things that doesn't really work right now. So first of all, HDR brightness is way too high. So let's lower it and let me go lower so you can see it even through my camera. That's so let's lower brightness. Okay, that's a little bit too much. It's a bit laggy when I'm recording, so hopefully it works well for you. Let's go with 1.3. And HDRI contrast will also be done a little bit lower. Let's say about this. If you want and are not really satisfied with uh, just HDRI, you can add some lights from here. For example, uh, probably spotlights will be best for that. But uh, if you want realistic lighting, I would recommend you to use only HDRI if you have good HDRI, which uh, if you are downloading from uh, HDRI Heaven, you definitely have good ones. And let's disable sun brightness a little bit. And you can change color of, this, uh, of that uh, light. Let's say I want it a little bit pinkish. You can also adjust the global brightness, but these are all parameters you will need to play with by yourself to see what suits you best. But now you can see that uh, everything is done, but you have this uh, red warning lighting needs to be re rebuilt. And that's what we will do now. And uh, let's click on that arrow and after build and set lighting quality to production. Okay, so we have highest possible quality of level, it's almost for real, so, but it has slowest computation time. But this is actually a really easy scene, so it should be fairly quick. And click on build lighting only. Okay, it will show you something, but except for that, it should work fine. And after rendering it, I can see that its brightness could be increased a little bit, so let's do it. Okay, that's a bit better. Let's lower it and look at this post-process volume. First thing, we will need to make it a little bit bigger. 
and we will use it afterwards. So let's click on our sequence master which we have created before and there should be somewhere a window but it's not so let's double click on it. Ah it's probably minimized yes. Yeah, and let's add here a new camera and click on uh, cl by clicking on that camera you can adjust how and where your camera is. Uh, you can change various settings for example by clicking on this sign camera actor here in a world outliner and uh, you can change uh, overall quality as in a normal 3D software. Let's say that I want to use full frame HDRI and da -da -da, probably don't really adjust the sensor wide. You can, but otherwise you can play with whatever you want. Let's say that I want to zoom it, and but I don't want it to be so blurry because you wouldn't see anything. So let's adjust this current aperture and so we can make it look like only front of your picture is in focus. And let's say that you even want to rotate it. So let's adjust this rotation. Okay, not this rotation. Let's go for something like that. We will do kind of weird artsy like uh, thing. <laughs> but now let's look at why we have added this post process volume because that's where most of your strength will come from. You can also click on sign camera actor and have separate uh, post process here, but it doesn't really matter if you use it here or here if you are working with uh, if you are rendering only one frame or video. So. Let's look at a uh, few things we can do here. I have done a little bit more complex video about post-processing, uh, which you can watch. It's made for games, but uh, you can use it here as well. So let's just quickly adjust it. Uh, let's say that I want this to be a bit more, sh bit more shiny. So click on bloom and add it. Let's let's put here chromatic abortion. Why not? Just a tiny little bit. I want to present my asset with chromatic abortion for some reason, like that viewer is drunk or whatever. <laughs> and uh, can we add here some lens flare? Yes, you can add a little bit of lens flare. If you are if you are made more of an art piece, feel free to do so. I was actually thinking about uh, making some tutorials about how to make uh, 3D renders, uh, 3D illustration, kind of like people does, right from Unreal Engine. So let me know if you would be interested in that. Okay, and let's get to really important part, that's color grading. So you can, let's say that I want this scene to be much warmer, so put it here. Set it warmer, global, and here you can play with whatever you want. That's just as if you would put it into Photoshop and adjust it as you want. Even though I would recommend you to, after you render it, put it again in Photoshop or some post-process uh, software and ad adjust it as you need. But it's up to you. You have your own wonderful workflow. Maybe not wonderful, as wonderful as mine, but you have your workflow. <laughs> okay, and let's add here, uh, let's say slope. Make it look a little bit better. Okay, now it should. Okay, that looks really bad with that slope, let's disable it. <laughs> Okay, now we have all that and we want to render it somewhere. So let's click on this render this movie. And uh, right now it's set to video se sequence, which we don't want, we want JPEG. And uh, no audio, we want to increase resolution. Right now it's on HD and let's say that we want for K resolution because you can always downscale. It's a little bit harder to upscale it, impossible. But before that, I have actually forgot we need to adjust this range, which means how much, how many frames it will actually render. Um, try to make it a little bit more than one, because the first and second one I have noticed are not really well. It's weird, but uh, Unreal Engine first and second one frames doesn't really render, at least not as you would need. So let's say that we want frames from 5 to 20. Some of them will be probably good. <laughs> Okay, render it and uh, imagine sequence, image se uh, sequence, JPEG, uh, uh, 4K resolution, uh, it's still uh, 16 to 90 and that should be fine. Uh, here you can set the where it will be rendered to, but it will be also shows, it will also show somewhere here which you can see things of the camera. <laughs> so let's capture it and save select it. You always need to save something, uh, save everything and it's also a good idea to build everything, uh, to build uh, lighting before that. You can see that it's quite high resolution, so you can zoom in as you need. And that's about it. That's how you can render illustration for your portfolio or whatever you need. 
or just illustrations. We are all artists. Okay, that's about it. I hope it was helpful for you. If it was, put your button on like. I don't know what I just said. Just press the like button. That would clear it here. <laughs> anyway, that's about everything for this video. Sir Fancy out. And I'm looking at myself again. Jesus, I got like a huge circles on the eyes. <laughs> this is going on the end of the video. <laughs>